Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and the latest changes to 3.0 in the beta have just then launched today. Um, a lot of balance changes, a few little ascendancy changes, and also Harbinger League has been announced as well. Overall, the feel for the day has been a bit of a roller coaster, and I'd say graphically, um, today's changes can be represented by my Templar's Celestial Hood plus Fiery Eyes combination. So let's start with the good. Uh, Harbinger Challenge League was announced and they, you can find all the details here in the news thread about it. It does look pretty cool thematically, all the blue, uh, the monsters, the actual Harbingers themselves, that all looks pretty damn cool and the entire league should be rather fun. Could even challenge something like Breach League as the best league to date. There's a lot of additional monsters, potentially um, a lot of additional challenging content and a bunch of new uniques to come with it that you collect collect in a sort of fragments and then piece together to make new uniques. As well as that, there's going to be new currency shards that these guys drop, uh, exalted shard, a bunch of new orbs and all that, which I'll go over just a bit later. But overall, the league looks pretty fun. Uh, long story short, there will be harbingers throughout uh, maps and zones and stuff that you can see uh, over here that either spawn or augment current monsters that you find and they are stronger and then the harbingers themselves which are sort of mini boss type guys will also um, factor into those fights and eventually you may be able to go fight them somewhere because it says if you're able to find the origin of the harbinger and halt their arrival you find pieces of powerful unique items uh, collect all and you'll be able to blah blah blah. So overall it looks like it could be pretty damn good. Uh, the theme for it looks very nice and the challenges give you some nice blue eyes for 12 rewards. Uh, 24 you get a crown effect and for 36 you get Harbinger character effect which is probably this thing. I'm sure it swells and moves and looks a lot better than it does right here. And then there'll be supporter packs uh, for 30 and 60 dollars which say uh, will include armor set, cloak, weapon effect, pet, and more. So obviously the $60 one will probably have better stuff. And the pet itself looks pretty damn cool as well. So overall, this announcement is um, fairly good, I think, especially with 3.0 coming. Um, this is just another bit of fun stuff coming as well at the same time. And the other good thing to come out of today is the tutorial book is live right now, and it actually looks pretty damn good. Uh, this does look like it'll help uh, newer players quite a lot, uh, especially with the you know graphical representation through GIFs uh, all along for quite a lot of these um, little pages of the book. So it covers quite a lot of stuff, a lot of basic stuff that, you know, it's not that intuitive and not that easy to figure out without looking elsewhere. So overall, this uh, tutorial book, something you can recommend to your friends uh, that are just starting the game when they do in 3.0, as it should uh, answer a lot of um, common questions and really just uh, give you a much better and easier start to the game than we otherwise would have. So this thing's a pretty good change and quite amazing to look at. And one other good thing that came out today is now in Act 5, um, you can see here, Act 5 Town, yes. the character of Lani over here now sells some Threshold Jewels. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is just limited to beta or also going to happen on live. I have a feeling it's also live, uh, that information is probably out there somewhere. But so far, this is pretty damn nice. Uh, you get not all of the threshold jewels, but quite a lot of them that are fairly build enabling. Um, things like uh, fight for survival for frost blades, you can now get both of those for one alc each uh, when you hit Act Five, which is a huge deal for a frost blade character. And uh, there's also a new spark gem involved at this point, which gives you two additional projectiles and then spark fires in a nova. So this should make spark uh, pretty desirable to use, I'd say. I've played around with it a bit, and it's fairly fun. Though it does reduce your spark duration by 25% uh, for each jewel you add. So I'm not sure you're going to use two of them ever. Uh, maybe you'll only ever really have one in your build, but that really depends on how you build it. And uh, it's a pretty decent jewel. Otherwise, yeah, there's plenty of other build enabling jewels you can use here. And um, hopefully this is a thing that goes to live and not just on beta. So now that we've taken care of the good 
Uh, there may be a few other good things to say, but let's get on to the confusing, which are some good, some bad, some we're not sure what's going on or why it's happening. So first and foremost, Trickster over here was buffed. Um, just this Swift Killer node down here, which currently, as you can see over here, if you've never seen it before, it just gives 15% chance on frenzy uh, on kill to gain a frenzy charge and plus one max frenzy. While in the uh, latest beta wave, it now gives plus one max frenzy and power charge and gives you a 15% chance to gain a frenzy charge and a power charge on kill. As well as that, it gives 5% damage over time per frenzy and 5% damage over time per power. So this is a really big node for your Scorching Rays, your Essence Drains, your Damage Over Time nodes, and uh, quite generic for a lot of other builds and nodes too. And all in all, this was an amazing change that just buffs Trickster quite a lot and should make it the premier Damage Over Time class, as opposed to the Scion I made on uh, Scorching Ray. However, we were also just hit with this change uh, off the cuff by Mark, that um, while he's explaining Chill and Shock, uh, the change to that, which I'll go over as well. Uh, a quick note here being power charges now only grant 30% crit strike per chance instead of 50 and 4% more spell damage per charge. Frenzy charges now grant 4% more damage with attack skills as opposed to 4% more overall damage. And uh, that just means that they swapped the frenzy to the power and uh, nerfed power charges altogether for anything that isn't spellcaster and even spellcasters uh, if you're using both before, this should be an overall decrease, which is weird. So overall, uh, Trickster here still is a net gain, but it's not as much as you would have otherwise thought, at least for a lot of other builds now. And it does leave us in a bit of an awkward place for a lot of other builds. Um, something that also needs to now be mentioned is the Assassin change here. Uh, Deadly Infusion now does no longer give 0.5 uh, base crit per power charge. It only gives 2% crit chance while at max power charges, which should be most of the time. And for a lot of builds, that shouldn't be too big a deal because um, a lot of assassin-based builds, they don't go for max power charges. They get four or five, and then, you know, it's a nice little crit bonus. And as well as that, you get the additional power charge. And uh, you still get the crit multi. But for some other builds that relied heavily on stacking power charges going 7, 8, 9, this is a huge catastrophic nerf and has killed quite a lot of those types of builds. So we're talking about Herald Auto Bomber, for example, uh, relies heavily on giving your Herald's crit chance through this sort of node, which then means you can actually... Uh, crit with your skills or let's say a random off the cuff crit incinerate currently has no crit you attach this sort of shit it has a lot more crit instead now you can get a lot less crit through it and likewise toxic delivery was nerfed and i'll get onto that um, just shortly but a bit more about the power and frenzy nodes first because this is a pretty big change and it is sort of unintuitive i think at this point because you can kind of see what they're trying to do with it they're trying to specialize your charges at this point they want your power charges to be more spell castery and your frenzy charges to be more attack based which makes sense sure but it also kills diversity in the game right now because currently you can spec your raider for example to do just about anything if you want it it can attacks with spells it can um benefit from trap shit but in the new uh, patch or 3.0 as it now is your frenzies will only benefit to attack based builds and you can't really build the spellcasters anymore and you don't really want frenzies on your spellcasters anymore and likewise for your assassins you don't really want to build attack based assassins too much anymore because uh, these power charges will only really be beneficial for for spellcasters because who really cares about 30% crit per charge um, especially specking into more of them because you know you used to spec into a 50% crit per charge which is 25 each per point for two points quite often and that makes sense and it's fine 30 percent you're only getting 15 out of it per point and that's pretty lackluster and uh it's just not huge anymore and it has certainly been a uh, pretty unpopular in the community as well if you uh, frequent reddit this has caused quite a shitstorm because uh, no one's really too much of a fan of this completely polarizing or you know splitting diversify undiversifying change 
of power charges and frenzy charges. Someone else mentions that, yeah, toolfall, completely useless now, which is pretty much true there. Um, a lot of different items just suck and don't really make sense. And just recently they previewed a unique which looked fairly good for trappers. Now it doesn't really make any sense because uh, frenzy charges, you gain 15% chance to gain a frenzy charge when your trap is triggered by an enemy. Um, if frenzies only apply to attack skills, then what's the point? Since traps are spells for the most part, sure, you can play some niche hipster builds with trap attached to attack skills, but that almost never happens and doesn't really make you want to build with this thing anymore at this point. So as a few people have said, it's not really... It's not really making too much sense as to what's going on with some of these changes, this one specifically, because it doesn't feel like there's too much... Uh, yeah, cohesiveness amongst what the team is doing there. One's balancing uh, changes, one's balancing uniques, they're not really interacting too much, maybe. I have no idea, that's all just stupid speculation. Maybe there's a grandmaster plan. But a change like this uh, certainly demoralizes a lot of us and doesn't make you too excited for the coming changes to uh, follow. And likewise, the actual chill and shock changes, if you read through this absolute clusterfuck here, mean that it's going to be harder to chill and shock things, which wasn't really the way I thought we were going to be leaning with uh, chill and shock for bosses and all that. Uh, long story short, chill and shock, uh, I guess, well, shock has been nerfed so that you pretty much never be getting uh, an increased damage taken of 50% to a monster because things like Fire Lightning Trap can only do a maximum of uh, 20%, it says somewhere here, and you can only get 50% from hits that cause all lightning damage, and those hits have to hit for 50% of the monster's life, which is pretty damn huge and something you'll never be doing against a boss, for example. So you have to hit at least 50% of an enemy's life to then gain 50% damage taken for those four seconds. Otherwise, there's just, um, if you hit it for less, it's going to do less percent damage, but still for the four seconds. So up to a threshold of at least 5% of the monster's uh, life as damage. Uh, it's kind of confusing for someone like me because I don't really understand this stuff too well. I can read through it and understand it, but uh, explaining it to you guys isn't going to be any easier than if you just read it yourself. Overall, it doesn't really seem to make uh, chilled or shocked uh, apply to enemies, especially bosses, any easier or better, which is what I thought was going to happen in the future for uh, 3.0. So instead, you're basically never going to try and chill and shock bosses uh, or anything too large in life because you'd be, be a lot better off just using an elemental focus based build that doesn't chill or shock at all and still using a vile lightning trap for the 20% increased damage taken that it will provide. Now I did play around on beta today with a few of the other changes and uh, discovered them but someone did compile most of them over here which I can link into the YouTube comments and I'll go over a few of them right now. One of the biggest ones being uh, toxic delivery as well on assassin getting nerfed so currently toxic delivery as you should know has poison you inflict with crits deals hundred percent more and bleeding hundred percent more right here for example and currently poison and bleed are in a shit place on beta already because they're pretty damn hard to build around and pretty damn hard to make effective uh, in the end game unless you're building specifically for viper strike or barrage or some shit like that things that can actually really truly scale this stuff to the absolute maximum and now with 30 percent more instead of a um, hundred percent more it basically kills all viability for the assassin so the previous problem they saw is that most poison builds would be going assassin because of this node now they've removed that problem by me making it so you don't take assassin at all and don't spec into poison at all for anything I've been playing around with a few uh, other little concepts of um, Raider, for example, with Poison, and I can't come up with too much just yet without factoring in something like Viper Strike, but it does seem like I could maybe do some Poison damage, and it's something I'm going to have to test uh, still on the beta, but long story short, it's really hard to see how this change is positive at this point, because it just kills whatever remaining viability we had for poison in my mind because it's something i wanted to try and now i'm not sure it's at all worth it because this just isn't really that good anymore at 30 percent and likewise with perfect agony down to 30 percent crit overall with the assassin side of things just seems weird and awkward and it is something i'm gonna have to try but it is something that just leaves you fairly uninspired because 
change after change, wave after wave, it looks like they are trying to force you to not do poison or damage over time builds in general. But we do also have a new keystone over here, which is uh, Crimson Lesser Poison, Crimson Dance. Uh, you can inflict bleeding on an enemy up to eight times. So this is a new keystone they put in for bleed to try and help its single target, I suppose. You can inflict it up to eight times. Bleed does not deal extra damage while the enemy is moving. And then 50% less damage with bleeding. So overall, it just means that the longer you attack a target, the more chance you will have to stack your bleeds and do more single target. But in the short term, it's less damage. That said, uh, you should be using things that stack bleed fairly consistently and have a high enough bleed chance that this should almost always be taken in your build because it should almost always be a DPS upgrade. That said, it just makes it a lesser poison and it's not really enough to make bleed super viable. I do still have an idea or two I want to play around with bleed on beta or 3.0, but as it stands, it doesn't look like bleed's going to be doing enough damage to really be viable in the end game. Uh, even if you spec entirely towards it. There's just not enough damage on the tree or ways to scale it in this new version without double dipping. Now, other changes that are worth mentioning, the pay to win currency tab has a few more slots down here for generic items and also a Parandus coin slot. So that's a pretty good change, I guess. And then a lot of flask changes came into play. Um, one that's not listed here is Basalt Flask, went from 20% damage, uh, physical damage reduction to 15. It's still a strong flask, but it is a slight nerf. And then a lot of these unique flasks got a slight adjustment. Um, mostly they're just across the board little nerfs here or there, and you can look at them yourself. They're all still fairly usable because they still provide a strong, um, powerful boost to a certain niche that they use or do, but they are across the board a bit weaker. So Wise Oak, for example, went from 20% penetration uh, to 10 to 15. Vinktars over here went uh, to 10% damage taken shock instead of the usual 50% shock. So it'll still shock things, but only be a 10% increase. And otherwise it still does all of its other good shit like huge lightning leech. So I think he's still going to see plenty of use. Taste of Hate got nerfed to 15 to 20% damage of extra cold. Lion's Roar nerfed to 20 to 25. Still a good flask. You'll probably use it in most melee builds regardless. Dying Sun, for whatever reason, got some reduced area instead of, um, you know, the big gain. You now get 15 to 25, which seems like a weird nerf because that's by no means the strong part of Dying Sun anymore. And its series promise got a slight nerf on its physical. Still a good flask. You'll still be using that in most builds anyway. Um, Witchfire Brew as well got its damage over time portion reduced. Not a big deal. Still a good flask and something you use in most builds that require a vulnerability. And then lastly, there were a few gem changes to some support gems and all that. Um, I'll let you read over most of them, but I will mention Ice Bite and Innovate. They were both changed to be pretty different and fairly usable in a lot of builds. So Innovate now does a flat amount of lightning damage and then an also an additional amount of lightning damage um, based off of the level of the gem uh, as a buff. So when you kill things that are shocked with supported skills, you'll then gain this much lightning damage for four seconds. And it scales up pretty well to something like an added lightning gem. Likewise, uh, Ice Bite now does a flat amount of added cold. And then also supported skills have two to three added cold damage per frenzy. Once again, it should be something like an added cold gem. So in quite a lot of builds that use frenzy charges, for example, this um, Frostblade Raider over here, this should be a staple in your build at that point probably better than just the added cold gem or maybe in addition to um, the added cold gem and then innovate should be pretty uh, used in quite a lot of builds as well that deal lightning damage something like a storm burst right now and then as well as that arcane surge over here got changed so it now does more spell damage uh, increased cast speed some mana regen based off of your max mana and it now triggers based off of the amount of mana you use attached to the supported skill rather than a percent chance. So if you attach this to your Orb of Storms and your Orb of Storms consumes at least 16 mana per cast, then Arcane Surge will be up 100% of the time whenever you press Orb of Storms. This does go up with levels though, and at level 19 it's something like 180 mana, I think. Yep, 180. So it's going to depend on um, how far you want to level it for how much b benefit you get. Ultimately, it looks like it should be a part of just about every setup at level 1 at least. Uh, you may level it a few times because my Orb of Storms here, for example, is 43 mana with a few supports. 
and uh, it requires like five casts with a level 19 for one proc. So you probably only want to do it, let's say, every two uh, casts, maybe just a guaranteed cast. So you don't want to level it too much. And it is a good buff to spellcaster builds by all means, but it's not quite as big as we originally thought. And it does change your playstyle potentially just a little bit. Overall, a lot of these changes leave me pretty uninspired for build creating and um, just, yeah, diversity of the game, I think. Now, it may be a topic for a separate video altogether, but I was personally a fan of the Poison Ignite meta or build creating environment because it did basically, it's it was strong by no, by all means, and it was really good. But it did mean that you could play pretty much any skill and scale it with Poison or Ignite, and then have just a different skill, all still scaling the same way, but it's a different way of playing the game because there's lots of different skills you could play. In this sort of environment, a lot of skills just won't be good anymore because the only way you'd be able to play them is by going really strong Ellie damage or converting Fizz to Ellie. And I think that's probably going to kill a lot of skills that we kind of want to play and uh, limit diversity and just overall you'll be building a completely different way to how you build right now, but still only building one way because dot damage and uh, poison and all that seems pretty shit at this point and hardly worth building. But maybe there's some things we're missing, maybe there's some things I'm missing and someone or a lot of people are going to come out and show you a new way of building because uh, it's very possible that we just don't really fully understand how to build with these changes and there's still more to come for 3.0. They did say there's going to be more balances uh, before 3.0 hits and then when 3.0 hits. So we'll see how that goes. But right now, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, like I said, for today's um, patch notes or not patch notes, just updates. Harbinger League, that looks pretty good. A lot of these other changes look pretty damn bad. I'm not too sure what to think anymore. I'm still hyped for 3.0. Stormburst should be fun, I think, if nothing else. But otherwise, yeah, we're left a bit um, confused at this point, I think. I hope my uh, ranting and raving for the past 30 minutes helped. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you next time.